guys, this is Rick coming at you with Weed to No Basis, the podcast for all things cannabis business related. Are you an entrepreneur? Have something you wanted to create, something you wanted to bring to life in the cannabis industry? Maybe you've always wanted to partake in one of the biggest industries in modern day history. This is the podcast to listen to. Hey guys, this is Rick and we're back. We're live with Weed to No Basis. And remember, if you're listening to this, then you too have a Weed to No Basis. So, Just as a quick recap, guys, who we cater to with this show, with this media channel, is the Cannabis Startup Entrepreneur. Now, all of those words are relevant because we cater to folks in the cannabis industry. That is our ideal client. Now, we've touched on that in the past. That is who we serve. Startup. Guys, I love the art of the start. I love the art of the start. I I love it when an entrepreneur or somebody, let's just call them the average Joe or Jane, has a great idea and one day they find themselves as an entrepreneur building something. Entrepreneur, guys, meaning you're here, you're in this to win it. You're here to scale. You're here to maybe embrace those sleepless nights. Maybe you're here to, um, to grind it out after the nine to five, you're the five to nine. Guys, I gotta tell you, I love that. I don't like grinding for the sake of grinding, but um, you, gotta ha- you gotta hand it to the ones who are working on what's now a side hustle, which could very easily, especially in this day and age, in this industry, the timing is perfect, they could very easily create something that will change the world. If only their world. And that brings me really to what we're talking about today because, um, you know, we we get feedback. We'll get questions asked either direct message to us, to me on my personal Instagram page, which is Planet Boy or the at Planet Boy, or they'll go to Weeds and Obasis on Instagram, which is at Weeds and Obasis, uh, or YouTube or iTunes. We're now across eight different platforms and we're cooking with gas. So this this show, guys, because of you guys, it's really, it's on fire. It's... um, it's, we're, we're blazing, get that? We're blazing. But here's the thing, guys, is um, I got a direct message and they asked about morning routines. And I was like, okay, that's, that's a fair question. And I really hadn't thought that granular about what it is you might want to know until it happened again. I literally had a phone call. I had a long phone call with, um, with a good friend and he's an entrepreneur, in fact, a little sidebar. He's about to, as of this recording, leave his nine to five because his side hustle has become his main thing. But the question he asked was, Rick, okay, so I'm about to be on my own. In other words, I'm not gonna go to a job. Guys, there's nothing wrong with having a job. You can create wealth and have an awesome living with the, with the job, guys. This is not anti-job. I'm just using this for the sake of the story. So he says, Rick, I'm about to to leave my job. You know, my side hustle is going to become my main hustle, and the the sea has sawed, the seesaw, right? It's it's, it's flipped, which is an awesome thing, guys. And he said, and I no longer am going to be going to a place and punching in and then punching out with a lunch break. I'm no longer going to be having my Tuesday team meetings and my Friday this and my Monday that. Guys, really the essence of the question is, how the hell do I manage myself? I mean, that's, that's really what these, and I've, now I've gotten this question more than one time. And I thought, this is a fantastic episode. Because if you are about to go from side hustle to main hustle, if you're about to go to full-time employee to full-time entrepreneur, basically, if you're about to, or you currently are, um, the reason why and how your family eats then having routines is critical. It really is. Uh, th- take this one phrase right here, routine will set you free. So for some people, especially entrepreneurs, they might say, no, no, I'm anti-routine, I'm an entrepreneur. I just, I take it as it goes, I, like it goes, I, I roll with it. You know, I get up and sometimes I'm up till four or this and that, and, and guys, I, I get that. Those days happen, they do, believe me. In fact, I have, <laughs> we're recording this, and it is, what time is it? It's about 1.30 p.m. And last night was one of those odd nights where I was up till 3.30. Just couldn't turn it off. It happens. But here's the thing. When we have a routine, something that's set in stone, if you will, something that we will not compromise on, will not deviate from, it makes everything else easier. So I'm going to get real, real granular here. Because the literal question was, Rick, what is your routine? What is your morning routine? So I'm going to be looking at my computer screen because I was actually asked about 
uh, let's see, I'm gonna look down guys, and it's not to ignore you, it's because there were so many great questions. There was one, two, three, four, five, there's about a good eight or nine questions guys, and I'm gonna give you the question, and as I answer from my perspective and how I roll this out every day, I want you to think about what your routine is. Remember, routine will set you free. It will. It absolutely will set you free. Guys, in a later episode, we're gonna talk about conscious competence. And routine is the first building block in establishing conscious competence. That's for a later episode. But the first and obvious question is, Rick, um, and this was literally on a phone call, uh, what's your morning routine? Like, what's your morning routine? So guys, let me just preface this. I'm 51 years old. I have um, grown kids, I'm married. Uh, my wife and I live in a high rise in downtown San Antonio, Texas. So there's a lot of variables that obviously may not be your variables, but this is my morning routine. I wake up generally about 7.30 a.m. every day. I'm not an early riser, I'm not like Jocko, the Navy SEAL who shows on his Instagram page four o'clock a.m. I'm not that, nope, used to be. I used to be active duty military guys and my uncle, Uncle Sam, <laughs> we, we didn't have a choice. So getting up at the crack of, at, at, oh dark 30 was, it was the routine. It was a forced routine. So my day starts around 7.30 a.m. and I do set an alarm. I set an alarm and here's literally how my day rolls. So my alarm goes off guys on my clock and I track my sleep. There is an app on my phone where I track, um, it literally tracks how, if I snore, it tracks um, if, I, if I'm restless, it tracks whether I had good sleep or bad sleep. Um, and then when I wake up, I, I record my heart rate. So that's the first thing I do, literally. When my alarm goes off, when it first rings at about 7.30 a.m., I look at my phone and I, first of all, I, I do the little settings on the app and I'll share with you guys what the app is later. But um, in fact, I'm gonna share it with you now. Let me just pull it up. I didn't expect to do this, but what the heck. It's called Sleep Cycle. It's Sleep Cycle app. And uh, if you have the app, guys, you can definitely you know, attach little electrodes to you. I don't do any of that because sometimes I'm a restless sleeper, but um, turn off my phone, check my sleep pattern, and I take my heart rate immediately. So I, there's, there's a health aspect, if you will, to my wake up routine. I wanna see what my heart rate is upon waking up. Uh, when I was training for my Ironman, it was in the 40s. Uh, now, generally speaking, it's in the high 50s to low 60s when I wake up. So 7.30, uh, my alarm goes off. I check my biometrics, if you will. It, it's truly because um, I'm developing a data set. Some parts of me are a little nerdy a data set of when, of what, what are the variables when I sleep the best, and what are the variables when I sleep the worst. So I've been collecting that probably for several years now. But um, I get up guys, and the first thing I do when I get up is I wash my face. I kid you not, I put eye cream on, I do. <laughs> I do, you're probably wondering like, how does Rick maintain his boyishly handsome good looks in his 50s? It's because I do, it's by Kiehl's, and I've used Kiehl's for years guys. Um, no, I'm not sponsored by them, but we probably should be sponsored by them. But uh, we could be. So Kiehl's, if you're listening to this, stuff, I literally use a, a, a cream on my face on the days, every day and every night, and I travel with it. But um, uh, travel, keep that, in, keep that in the back of your mind, guys, because my travel routine is, exact, is the exact same. But I, I wash my face, I put my, ice, my eye cream on, I immediately, I kid you not, first thing I do is I set my timer for 59 minutes and that begins the first block or chunk of my day. I walk out of my bedroom and my wife is 9.9 .9 times out of 10 still asleep and um, she, she sleeps a little bit later than I do. Not much, but she does. I walk out guys and um, turn on the coffee machine, like literally click the on button. I walk into my office, I turn on Fox News um, local Fox News. I don't want to cause, why not CNN? I don't mean like Fox News. I mean the local news station so I can see the weather, uh, what's going on. Uh, and then I walk back in and I make bulletproof coffee. So, but what I'm really describing guys is from the time I wake up my first hour. So every morning is bulletproof coffee. When I travel, I take a pack, a bulletproof pack. It's, if you don't know what bulletproof is guys, it's basically, um, uh, butter and oil in your coffee. 
I know it sounds gross, but it actually turns into a frothy goodness. And because I was up till 3.30, I have coffee right now. That's another part of my routine is in the afternoons, I'll have coffee. I'm digressing. So bulletproof coffee, and I have exactly two cups. I take my first cup, I sit at my desk, and I read. I read. That's all I do. I'll read. Uh, first of all, I'll usually have a ton of emails, maybe a hundred if not more, just from the time I went to bed till now. I, I like to empty my email box. So um, a ton of emails. I'll read. I'll read blogs. I read scripture. I forgot to tell you guys that. Before my feet hit the ground is I have an app. And the app, I'll share this with you too, it's... Um, it's called Jesus Calling, and guys, this is not any kind of statement. You can do whatever you want, but I read. It's an app, and every morning it opens up to a new um, piece of scripture, and generally it takes me less than 10 minutes to read, and when I read it, I will make a post on my, and you can look at my Twitter page. My Twitter page is, it's at Purpose Hack, one word, Purpose Hack. You will see at about sometime every morning of the last few years of my life, I tweet out a scripture that is impactful for me that morning. Okay, but fast forward. Hop out of bed, make my coffee, news is on, sit at my desk. I have bulletproof coffee at my desk, and this is probably more than you need to know, but generally I do not have a shirt on because I work from home. <laughs> so I do have pajama bottoms, just to be clear. And um, I read. I, I consume a lot of material every morning, my first hour. I'll read blogs. I'll read um, um, activities in high-intensity athletics like Ironman or CrossFit, things like that. That is in interesting to me. Uh, personal development, uh, Gary Vee, Tony Robbins, Jack Canfield, things like that, um, Eckhart Tolle. Um, so I consume a lot of material and then um, some philosophy. Like I love to read about Stoic philosophy, so I subscribe to several, several blogs. And of course, guys, make no bones about it. I subscribe to probably d uh, well over a dozen a cannabis centric um, blogs and or periodicals. But everything I do is I read online and I proceed within that first hour to also um, empty my email box, empty it. I look to see what's important, uh, what needs my attention within those first two to three minutes. If it doesn't need my attention, then I'll flag it for later. And my first hour, guys, is literally as I just described. So. The next question then is, how long have you done this? Like, how long have you had this routine? And I gotta say, guys, I've been unemployed and unemployable, like an entrepreneur, for the last, since two, the end of 2000 was when we launched our first company, when I officially became my own employee, my own boss, if you will. So it's been about 20 years. I didn't really nail this routine down the way it is today, the way I'm describing it, until about, I want to say maybe 2014, 2014, 15. So give or take four to five years. It's been a while. It's been a while. And that was around the time we sold our staffing company, which was MedTrust. And um, my, I was able to have a much um, tighter grip on how I controlled my day and my time. You know, when I was a CEO of a large company, I had to be at the office. And uh, so my routine was radically different. But um, uh, or whatever, traveling or, or you know, going to meetings, things like that. But um, uh, now, this routine has been about, it's about four years old now, guys, because for the last four years, at least at minimum, I have um, worked from home, if not longer. But this routine has been, it's been my mainstay. It's been uh, salvation, honestly, guys. The next question, it's again, I'm reading the questions because there was a bunch of really, really good questions. And I, I can't go, there was a slew of them. I'm gonna go over the big ones, guys. Was, um, has, it, has my morning routine changed over the last few years? And um, it, honestly, it, it actually has. And here was the big change. The big change was uh, when I did my Ironman. And the reason why that changed is because I had a, a, a very distinct focus on training swimming, biking, and running. So my morning routine morphed a little bit then. And so for the time period that I was training for, for the Ironman, um, I did have a routine, and it was a variation of the current routine, the one I just described to you. Make sense? So there is some flexibility, some latitude, depending on the big picture. Depending on the big picture, guys. So um, my wife calls me um, 
a, a, kind of like uh, her, her own personal rain man. And guys, I say that with love and respect, please. She says that, you know, if, if my routine's disrupted, I get a little OCD. And I'm going to be honest, it, it, it happens. When my routine gets disrupted, I, I'm a little out of sorts. But the next question is, um, what, what time do you go to bed? And that's a good question. Now, I, I generally speaking, I'm in bed between midnight and 1 a.m. Central Time. And I usually am good if I have between four to five solid hours of sleep. I'm not one of those two hours and I can function and eight hours or more guys and that's just way, too, for me it's way too much time in bed. Uh, I just think eight hours in bed, that's, that's a third of my life, laying down in bed. And yeah, you can say there's the old analogy of you'll sleep when you're dead. Well, I, on some levels I, I, I believe that, but um, um, generally speaking, four to five hours, five is optimal for me and I can function at a high level for the day. Last night is a great example. I couldn't get to bed till 3.30. Like seriously, last night before this recording, I was awake until 3.30 and um, I slept until nine. So just about nine o'clock. But um, I go to sleep between 12 and one, generally speaking. So another question is, do you do anything before bed that helps the morning? And yes, I do. So remember I talked about the morning coffee? Well, I, again, this is my, uh, my wife calls it uh, lovingly, this is my OCD tendencies. I just call it um, preparation, Boy Scout, be prepared, right? So I set out my coffee. I set out my coffee cup. I pull the coffee maker to right to the edge of the counter. So I just walk by and click the button. I have my um, bulletproof coffee shaker ready and I have the control in my computer set up. So I literally um, have things preset. So when I get up, I don't have to worry about which coffee I'm gonna grab. It's already, even the Keurig, I put two Keurig K-cups out um, next to the machine so I know which one I'm gonna grab first and which one I'm gonna grab second. So I, I do that. Um, I do, I set myself up for um, simplicity and honestly for speed. Because I don't want to have to worry it, you know, when I wake up, what kind of coffee do I want? It's already set. Boom, 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 done. So um, the next question was, this is a good one because I, um, um, I travel. And it's like, okay, so you're traveling. How does the routine shift when you travel? Um, it does, guys. It, sometimes, you know, I'm in a motel room and there'll be a suite. Sometimes I'll be in a motel room, and like when I was in Brooklyn, it was called a pod, and that was the name of it, pod. And it was literally the size of probably the space behind me. Like, I kid you not. You want to talk about disruption and routine? It, it was a super cool, hip motel in the middle of Brooklyn. And uh, like the coolest part of Brooklyn, at least that what I, that's what I was told by my friends. And um, you're going to get this, guys. True story. The pod hotel in Brooklyn the toilet is inside the shower. You want to talk about disrupting a routine? <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. But, uh, and there was no coffee machine in the room. So um, knowing that that will be my morning, I scout out the, uh, the closest coffee shop, whether it's in the lobby or the Starbucks down the road. Or, um, uh, but yeah, the whole toilet in the shower thing, that was, I don't know. That, but that's totally true, guys. It was, the, it was a very, very cool hotel and one of the oddest hotels I've ever been in. But, <laughs> but the travel guys, otherwise, I take bulletproof to go. I have my computer with me. I got Wi-Fi. If Wi-Fi peters out, I use the hotspot. But um, I stick to my routine um, as closely as I can, especially on, on the road because uh, I may be in a different time zone. So then the next question is working out. And if you guys follow me on Instagram, me personally, it's, it's Planet Boy, is about five days a week without fail, I go, I'm in the gym. Um, on a great week, it'll be seven days. You know, when I'm not traveling, I'm home, when I'm, I'm adequately rested. But um, my morning routine, I'll hit the gym generally around 11 o'clock or noon central time. And um, so I'm in the gym. Uh, honestly, guys, if, if you're not healthy, and I'm speaking now not as a father or somebody who's better, but as a registered nurse, is your body, the body you have is the only one you have. If you don't take care of it, it's gonna do you bad. It is. Believe me, as an ER trauma nurse for a very long career, uh, I've seen people who have afflictions that could have easily been avoided by just taking care of yourself. So I am in the gym five days a week. 
and you can take that to the bank. I post that on my Instagram page just to let people know I'm here in the motherfucking gym and I'm getting my sweat on guys because you gotta take, call a timeout and make time for yourself. Another question is the answer emails first thing in the morning, leave until later in the day. First thing, you know, on your iPhone or your computer is a little red dot that shows you how many emails you have. I hate that dot. I do. <laughs> that dot, it, I, in my mind's eye, I see it and I don't like the dot. So um, I clear out my inbox and that works well for me. I'm, I am not the type of person who only responds to emails at 10 and 4. I'm like, no, sometimes emails come at you and you need to get on them, guys. Um, sometimes you need, to, um, you need to respond to stuff. And so, no, we're, as an entrepreneur, guys, you are sometimes moving and grooving so fast. So the, the short answer to that question is, I clear out my inbox first thing, guys. And something about that is, is these types of routines, guys, um, allow you to be proactive in your life and in your business. Uh, think about that. Um, I, I never want to find myself in a reactive state. I know it's going to happen. I know it will, but um, I want to be proactive. But back to the routine. I'll touch more on that proactive stuff in a second. So another question was, um, what are your most important tasks in the morning? I think I already touched on that. Um, uh, first of all is reading. First of all is, is me fulfilling me. That's, that's really my most important task. It's not a certain blog or a specific website. It's my first hour is me fulfilling me because we are no good to anybody, especially our businesses, if we're not on point. So Bulletproof Coffee, that's me fulfilling me. Scripture, that's me for me. The blogs I read, whether it's uh, business or philosophy or whatever, um, or just watching a, a segment on the news, guys, it's me fulfilling me. That is my most important task. And I would compel you guys, whatever you decide your routine is going to be, give yourself a chunk of time. My workout time is another ch chunk where it's me fulfilling me. Um, do you, so I touched on this, but another question was, do you follow this routine on weekends or do you change some steps? 90% of the time, my weekends are the same. Now, y'all, we have Friday nights. You know what I'm talking about. We have Saturday nights where you go out with friends or you hang out with your girl or your husband takes you out to dinner and you see some friends. You know, you have a great dinner. It's like, let's go Netflix and chill. Then you see some friends and 10.30 rolls around and you head over to Blue Box or to, you know, Minnie's Tavern, whatever. And then you realize it's 1 a.m. and you got to take an Uber home. So guys, those are, when I say um, reactive, proactive, uh, those are the moments where you're honestly a little reactive because, you know, we can't control everything life gives us. And sometimes what life gives us are those special moments like a Friday night where you're out later than you thought. And those are when my routine changes. But it's a, it's a good thing because you've, you, you've built some memories, you've had a good time with your spouse or family or friends, and um, it's okay. You know, those are the moments, the days where my routine shifts, where I'm okay with it because it was for a good cause, if you will. Your health and well-being, your mental stability. As an entrepreneur, guys, it's tough enough. But um, that being said, I simply push my wake-up time further back. So my routine stays the exact same. I will just wake up later. Generally speaking, on the weekends, on those nights where it's a little long, 9, 9.30, 10 at the latest. Guys, I'm, I'm just not wired to stay in bed for a long time. I can't. So my routine does shift on the weekends. Um, I don't change any steps. I, I don't. Everything stays the same. I may have less business calls, but um, for the most part, my routine stays the same. Uh, a couple more questions, guys, and then we'll, we'll wrap this. And by all means, if you have questions or comments about this or you're, you want to know how you get this started, leave them here, uh, you know, down below or wherever the, you know, the, the comment box is. Um, uh, message us, DM us, weedinobasis.com or me personally, Planet Boy. Um, so another question is, on days where you're not home, um, are you able to adapt in a different environment? And good question. I touched on that a little bit with my pod story. But... Um, uh, that being said, is, is I will look into where I'm going and where I'm staying, even when I stay with my mom. So in one of the episodes I talked about the Reno recap, 
I actually spent two days in a hotel, two nights in a hotel, and one night at my mom's house. So I disrupted my routine four times in four days. I went from home to a hotel to my mom's and then back home. So I had a quadru quadruple disruption. But here's where um, planning ahead helps. Here's where thinking two steps ahead, being proactive, not reactive. I looked up the hotel and it just so happened it was a hotel I had stayed at. So I made sure it had a coffee machine. I made sure it had the stuff and made sure it had an alarm and that there were plugs where I could plug my phone in next to the bed for my app that helps me sleep better. Make sense? I try to mitigate the unknowns by making sure I know as much as I can. So um, adaptation for me generally isn't that difficult. Yeah, so that Reno uh, recap, there was a, a quadruple disruption. So it was disruption, disruption, and then you know what? You can even say a quintuple because um, there was a two hour time shift. But either way, routine still sets you free. The final question, guys, and I'm reading this, it's a little bit small on my screen. Um, oh, it's what do you do if you fail your routine and how does this mess with the rest of your day? Oh man, guys. So if you were asked my wife this question, she might use the word, you know how when you see the Snickers bar commercial and somebody gets hangry and they're not themselves, they're like this alter ego? Well, I'm not saying I'm hangry, but I'm just saying if my routine gets disrupted, it, it does, it messes with me, guys. And it might take me... Um, I pull in all my Tony Robbins training and try to have a shift in state immediately. And sometimes, you know what the worst is, is when I'll travel and, and um, uh, maybe it happened once where my bulletproof coffee pack had ripped open and it spilled and I couldn't get it. I was like, oh my, I don't have bulletproof. And for me, that's fuel. But guys, it does. Honestly, that's why, um, again, I'll go back to the proactive reactive is because it's not always 100%. But when it's on, it's on. And when it's off even just a little bit, I feel it, I do. And I try to get myself on track as rapidly as possible. And really that's the essence of what this whole session today was about. This whole episode was um, routine will set you free. Put another way, guys, is these two words, proactive or reactive. You see, because as an entrepreneur, we're gonna be throwing a lot of curveballs, a lot of fastballs. Um, you're gonna have to duck on some of those balls, you know what I'm saying? And we're going to have to react, which is why I'm a firm believer in controlling the things we can control. And routine is one of those fundamental building blocks. So take this episode, guys, and think about the questions that I was that were posed to me and ask them of yourself and develop a routine because routine will set you free personally. Now, maybe another episode we'll talk about a business routine, but guys, um, your business starts with you. You are, um, at, at an early stage for the cannabis startup, you are your business. You're probably doing 10 different jobs. So managing yourself as best as you can is critical to the success, not only of you, but you as an entrepreneur building something for the long term. Hope this helped, guys. This is Rick, this is We Deno Basis, and today we got kind of under the sheets, like almost literally, of my routine and why that's relevant and why it would be relevant to you. And remember, if you're listening to this, guys, you too are on a We Deno Basis. Talk to you guys next time. Peace.